You see, we carry the illusion that other people have caused our misery, but in reality, we've elected to take on a form of self-imposed bondage. From CHOF Ministries Studio One in Strongsville, Ohio, it's From the Pulpit with Bishop Houston. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining me once again. This is where you get your essence charged or recharged with a wholesome biblical word. Beloved, what was your response the last time someone heard you? Perhaps you felt the urge to retaliate. Maybe you took no action at all, but instead concealed anger in your heart. In this message, we'll look at part three of my five-part series entitled Ambushed. You never saw it coming. And we'll be focusing on the ambush of unforgiveness. Our focus scripture will come from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. I present to you Bishop Dr. W. F. Houston, Jr. Our scripture reading reads in this manner. Be kind and loving to each other and forgive each other just as God forgave you in Christ. Again, it reads, be kind and loving to each other and forgive each other just as God forgave you in Christ. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your protection and your love and strength. Lord God, in the midst of all the struggles and temptation in this world, keep us certain of your love and goodness. Lord God, please continue to use me to provide your words to your people. Help us to continue to stay focused on you and honor you while we're here on this earth. I pray that today's word will bring salvation to everyone that listens to this message as our ministry continues to spread the gospel all over the world. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. The Bible has quite a bit to say about forgiveness and unforgiveness and Perhaps the most well-known teaching on unforgiveness is recorded in Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 through 35. And this is where you'll find Jesus' parable about the unmerciful servant. And in uh, the parable, there was a king uh, who forgives an enormously large debt, basically one that could never be repaid of one of his servants. Uh, But later, that same servant refuses to forgive the small debt of another man. And the king hears about this and rescinds his prior forgiveness. And in Matthew 18, 35, you'll find that Jesus concludes by saying, this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. In our focal scripture in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, the apostle Paul writes, be kind and loving to each other and forgive each other just as God forgave you in Christ. Now, this sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Yet, you and I know the truth that though it seems simple, It's not necessarily easy. You see, when someone comes at you the wrong way, no matter whether the hurt came by way of words or deeds, forgiveness can be terribly difficult. Mm -hmm. You see, the enemy will entice you to be so angry that you take revenge. But as a mature believer, you must avoid the enemy's ambush of unforgiveness and choose the peace of forgiveness as Christ has shown you. Now, I want to look at this definition of unforgiveness right here. You see, if you want to understand unforgiveness, you must first know what forgiveness is. 
Forgiveness is the willingness to give up your resentment towards someone who has wronged you regardless of how serious or how painful that wrong might have been. In other words, you renounce any desire to get even. Now, before we go any farther, there are three elements to forgiveness that we need to identify right here. One, you have to give up resentment about the wrong. Two, you have to give up resentment toward the wrongdoer. And three, you have to give up plans for retaliation. Friends, forgiveness is more than just saying some words. It must come from the heart. It has to come from within. Now, on the other hand, beloved, unforgiveness is a deliberate mindset to do the opposite. You see, unforgiveness will urge you to resent the wrong and the wrongdoer, then go out and try to seek some revenge. In Ephesians 4.31, Paul associates unforgiveness with bitterness, wrath, anger, chaos, slander, and malice. It's hard to understand why anyone, I say anyone, would choose those painful attitudes over tenderness, gentleness, and a forgiving spirit. And you know, beloved, there are so many people in the world today that are physically ill because they do not want to forgive. They live day by day, year by year, with the counsel of an unforgiving heart. Be loved. Let me tell you, the ambush of the unforgiving heart clings to the past and refuses to extend to others what our Heavenly Father has extended to us. If we look back at Ephesians 4 and 32, we'll find that the Apostle Paul insists upon our forgiving each other just as God in Christ has forgiven you. Now, as a result of a resentful attitude, there will be certain negative consequences in the life of an unforgiving person. And one of the most significant repercussions of unforgiveness is that bitterness takes root in the heart. I'm speaking of the mind and emotion. And then it spreads its paws and it choke out every godly trait that's in the believer. And something else. Some have associated unforgiveness to a genetic disorder. <clears throat> well, for those of you who think this way or have been taught this way, I have a news flash for you right here. Unforgiveness is not some kind of genetic disorder. Mm -mm. It's a choice. It's a choice. The truth is, People choose to be unforgiving. It's a deliberate decision and self-inflicted pain. You see, we carry the illusion that other people have caused our misery, but in reality, we've elected to take on a form of self-imposed bondage. It's a spiritual asset that eats through the spirit within us, and very few realize the terrible effects of unforgiveness. Beloved, I invited you here today to tell you this root of bitterness will keep you from being the person God wants you to be and it will prevent you from carrying out his will for your life. The refusal to forgive is an act of pride and rebellion and what's more appalling, beloved, it's a deliberate disobedience to the word of God. If you look at Matthew 6.15, you'll find that when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he added this. He said, if you do not forgive others, then your father will not forgive your transgression. Now, this doesn't mean, beloved, that the believer loses his or her salvation, but it does indicate God will hold you accountable and there will be discipline. Now, the discipline will come because we as Christians are never given the right to attach ourselves with an unforgiving spirit. In Matthew 18, 22, Jesus teaches us that we must forgive 70 times 7, which means we must always forgive. Paul also writes that we should bear with one another and forgive one another because it's in the same way God has forgiven us. Beloved, all of these passages from God's word makes it very clear that the ambush of unforgiveness is never an option for the committed believer. Now, there may be someone out there asking, Bishop Houston, what are the consequences of an unforgiving spirit? Well, I'm glad you asked. 
Jesus teaches us that God wants to answer our prayers, but we must first forgive others. If we don't, it'll make us bitter and it will affect our prayer life and our worship will be affected also by it. Jesus also teaches us that when we're in conflict, we are to stop. Stop. Even in the middle of our worship and go get the problem straight now. Friends, our witnessing, our giving, and our overall spiritual growth are terribly weakened by a heart, I'm speaking again of the mind and emotions, that carries bitterness. And let me tell you right here, every other aspect of our life also is affected. When we're loaded down with stress and anxiety and resentment, physical illness may result. And lastly, because others don't enjoy being around bitter people, our relationships are puzzled too. Beloved, in order to confront the ambush of an unforgiving spirit, the first requirement is to take it seriously and assume full responsibility for our own decisions and actions. You have to acknowledge unforgiveness as a sin and confess it honestly to God. The next step is you have to lay your anger down. You have to strip it away. Then you can ask God's forgiveness. After that, you should begin praying for the other person. If that person has been aware of your bitterness, then you should go instantly to them and ask for forgiveness. Beloved, we can all live out God's grace by asking him to show us something we can do on that person's behalf. We can serve them instead of resenting them. Beloved, you can prevent the devil from trapping you over and over and over again by refusing to rehash the same old issue or allowing the bitterness to, to seep back in. This debt must be forgiven and counseled in the same way our sins are. You know, there are some Christians who believe they have forgiven the person that's wronged them, but the roots of bitterness are still deep in their hearts. Uh, but the one that truly has forgiven someone knows beyond a shadow of a doubt when these two indications are exhibited. First indicator is when your feelings toward the other person has changed. Mm -hmm. In other words, when you see him or her, you'll be aware that the resentment is gone. The second indicator is when you feel genuine concern for the other person. And in other words, again, you care about his or her spiritual welfare and you want what is best for him or for her. Beloved, I've discovered personally how God blesses us when we choose to forgive others. I found that he removes all the baggage of resentment, malice, and wrath that weighs us down. And, and once that's gone, my friend, then all the goodness of his righteousness can come flooding into your, your spirit lives and uh, to your other parts of your lives. And this can be a joyful and fulfilling area in your life just as he had created to be in the first place. Now, you might wonder about what will happen to the person who's wronged you. Well, all I can tell you, you just have to step aside and stay focused on the joy, the peace and the love that God has installed in your life and just let God sort that out because we serve a righteous, sovereign, and impartial God. And... In time, even the person or people who's wronged you will stand before God in judgment. Beloved, your responsibility is simply to let go of all resentment or in no one anything except the ongoing debt of love. The ambush of unforgiveness may explode slowly, but it destroys us just the same. But through the power 
and grace of the Lord Jesus, we can be free from his terrible devastation, free from old grudges to walk in peace, joy, and victory. Amen? Amen. Let us pray out. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, I thank you for allowing me to be one of the many voices that deliver your word to the world. Lord God, at this time, I stand in the gap in prayer for the sick and the shut-in and for all those that are in other lands and other countries that are silenced by their government. Father God, at this time, we confess that in the past, uh, we held on to unforgiveness. Uh, and at times, bitterness and resentment ruled our heart against certain people who hurt us or disappointed us. Uh, Lord God, we now recognize this as sin and confess it as sin. Uh, Lord God, you have said in your word that if we confess our sins, you are just and faithful to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, Lord God, we now freely forgive all the those people and ask you to bless them abundantly. Lord God, that this time we forgive ourselves for our many faults and failures. That's because you, Lord God, have freely forgiven us. Thank you, Lord God, uh, for freeing us from the loads of unforgiveness, bitterness, and resentment. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Friends, go out and touch someone and tell them you love them. Because telling them later just may be too late. I love you all and God bless you all.